When Mike and Rebecca Ellis found out their son Cole, a straight A student athlete, was involved in a sexting situation, they'll be the first to admit they overreacted. First it was calm and then it got to be where it got aggressive in, in questioning, how did this all come about? And I think that I, as the leader of the household, I think I probably overstepped my boundaries as it relates to embarrassing Cole. If I could replay that day, that day would have never occurred. Rebecca was shocked to learn Cole had been deleting sex, hoping the messages and pictures would go away. People start talking and rumors get started and um, with our finding out, it had escalated and um, I think he just felt in a moment of time where he had let a lot of people down and um, we asked him why he didn't come and tell us and um, to this day I don't really know other than we're asking a teenage boy why he didn't tell us that he was getting texts like that. After the heated argument, they prayed with Cole. It would be the last time they would bow their heads with their 13-year-old son. And I think on that Monday morning when we were going to go to school, I think it was just too overwhelming for him to have to deal with. Cole Ellis committed suicide on October 26th, 2009. A young man who had it all. I mean, that's what his friend said. Why Cole? Because he had everything everybody could want. But he made a really bad choice. And he didn't tell anybody, he didn't rely on anybody, and it, and it just started to weigh heavily, heavily on him. And they need to think about who they're affecting. The Ellis's say too many parents think their children aren't sexting. You take a young man who's, uh, who is going through puberty and you think that they're not gonna look at the pictures that come through on the phone, that, I mean, that's not even thinking realistically. Rebecca and Mike don't want this to happen to another family. That's why they're in favor of education and transparency. As long as they live in your house, obviously these kids are not paying for cell phones and you know, the parents are, is that I think it's your parental responsibility, you know, to check them or, you know, to, to look and see what they're doing with their phones. Experts say there are warning signs. Every time you walk in a room, they hide their phone from you or they're sneaking around or if their phone buzzes with a text, they get up and leave the room that you're in. Then there are regular text messages, which look innocent, but can be code. Here are a few examples. GNOC means get naked on camera. PIR translates to parents in room. CU46 means see you for sex. Even the number eight can mean oral sex. And when sexting goes from messages to pictures, experts say your teen could even face criminal charges. If you are thinking of sending that nude picture or asking for that nude picture, you need to think about what can happen because of that. Um, that's dissemination of child pornography. That's, you know, enticing a minor. Even though you, possession of, a, of child pornography, even though you are a minor, you're still in possession of that picture. You're still sending that picture, um, even if it's a picture of yourself. Mike Ellis has spent many sleepless nights looking for red flags with his son and thinking about what he would do differently. What did I do wrong? <clears throat> I do think of a few subtle personality changes that occurred. He was a passionate hunter, and there were two invites that he declined to go on. I think I just would have loved him. I think I would have spent the night in his room with him. I would have just embraced him. So what can parents do? Have an open dialogue with your children. Remember, they're minors. You can take their phone away and search it at any time. You can also download an app called Teen Safe, which allows you to see messages, texts, and internet activity on their phone. There's a charge, but the site says more than a half million parents have already signed up. Casey Drescher, WSFA 12 News.